Hi all. So in this video we are going to see about vestibular pathway. So this question can be asked as a diagram question or also as an answer briefly question. So we will see how to approach this question. So just so that you understand the concept better, I will just give an introduction. We know that we have got a vestibular apparatus in our inner ear which is responsible for maintaining equilibrium. So the vestibular apparatus mainly consists of the three semicircular canals which are the anterior posterior as well as the lateral semicircular canal each which has got uh, the sense organ present inside its dilated portion which is called the ampulla connected to the semicircular canals we've got sac like processes which are called the utricle as well as the saccule which are uh, structures that are specifically for detecting linear acceleration okay and then this is the cochlea which is uh, the organ for hearing so now we know that inside this ampulla of semicircular canals and inside the utricle and saccule we've got different sense organs. So the sense organ in the semicircular canal is called the crista ampullaris and the sense organ in the utricle and saccule is called the macula. So whenever there's a rotation or acceleration or whenever there's a linear acceleration these sense organs contain hair cells. So hair cells will detect that acceleration and convert it into neural signals. So now we will see what happens to these neural signals that is by vestibular pathway. So in order to depict the vestibular pathway you can draw this cut section showing the thalamus and the brain stem. So impulses from the vestibular apparatus pass through the vestibular cochlear nerve and it first reaches the vestibular ganglion. So from the vestibular ganglion it is going to reach the vestibular nuclei of the brain stem. So vestibular nuclei is actually a complex of four nuclei which consist of the superior, lateral, medial and spinal. So it reaches the vestibular nuclei and from there these fibers can go in many directions. So one, one pathway is it can go to the cerebellum. So in the connections of cerebellum we, we have also already learned about the role of vestibular cerebellum, how the fibers go to the floccular nodular lobe and all that. So this is how cerebellum has an important role to play in equilibrium so it goes to the cerebellum some of the fibers can directly go to the cerebellum without touching the vestibular nuclei now some fibers can actually from the vestibular nuclei the second order neurons can go down to form the vestibulospinal pathway so this is the anterior vestibular spinal pathway and this is the lateral vestibular spinal pathway so we've got these tracks which are arising from the vestibular nuclei down to the spinal cord. Now there are other group of fibers that are coming from the vestibular apparatus and then it goes up via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So we know that medial longitudinal fasciculus is a pathway or track that is going to connect our 3, 4, 6 cranial nerves. Okay. So this, these are the 3, 4, 6 cranial nerve nuclei. So from the uh, vestibular nuclei there are fibers that go up the medial longitudinal fasciculus which connects the 3, 4, 6 cranial nerve nuclei. Now this is especially important in reflexes like vestibular ocular reflex which connects the vestibular system as well as the ocular movements. Okay, So that is another uh, connection and some fibers can also go from the vestibular nuclei to the thalamus and from the thalamus to the cortex. So this is another uh, connection from, from the vestibular nuclei to the, to the thalamus and from the thalamus to the cortex. Okay. Now finally there are some fibers that goes to the reticular formation also. So here you can see that you've got some fibers going to the reticular formation also. So this is the vestibular pathway. You can see that mainly it goes to the cerebellum then down to the spinal cord then up via the medial longitudinal fasciculus and from that to the cortex and finally to the reticular formation. Okay. So now we will move on to the finer details of this pathway. So the first order neuron it arises from the vestibular apparatus and it passes through the vestibular ganglion which is also called scarpa's ganglion. So it reaches the vestibular ganglion and from there the central process of these neurons enter the brain stem. Now in the brain stem the majority of the fibers end in the vestibular nuclear complex where they synapse with the second order neuron. So most of the fibers you know synapse here with the second order neuron. But there are some fibers that just pass through the vestibular nucleus but do not relay there 
and end in the floccular nodular lobe of the cerebellum. So that is what I said about this tract here. They do not synapse here, but they pass through and end in the floccular nodular lo lobe of the cerebellum. Okay. So that was about the first order neuron. So what about the vestibular nucleus? So as I said before, vestibular nucleus is a complex of four nuclei which consist of medial vestibular nucleus, spinal or inferior vestibular nucleus, lateral vestibular nucleus and superior vestibular nucleus. Okay. So these are the components of the vestibular nuclei. Now what are the different pathways or from the uh, vestibular nuclei where do the fibers go? So first one is called the vestibular vestigial tract. So from the name itself, we can know that it is going to the from the vestibular nuclei to the vestigial nucleus. Vestigial is present in the cerebellum. So it is this tract here, which is going to the cerebellum. So majority of the fibers from the vestibular nucleus pass through the inferior cerebellar pedicle and they is going to the floccular nodular lobe of the cerebellum, which is a part of the vestibular cerebellum. So that is how cerebellum has a role to play in equilibrium. Okay. So that is the first tract, vestibulo vestigial tract. Second one is the vestibulo spinal tract. So here, as we said before, it descends in the spinal cord and terminates in the anterior horn cells of the various spinal segments. So this is the anterior vestibular tract, and then we've got the lateral vestibular tract. So the these vestibulo spinal tract they mainly originate in the lateral vestibular nucleus neurons. So the lateral nucleus is going to contribute to this vestibular spinal tract okay now the third tract is as we said before is a medial longitudinal fasciculus so it is this this tract here so we know that the from the vestibular nuclei the superior and medial divisions of the vestibular nuclei ascend as a medial longitudinal fasciculus so they terminate in the motor nuclei which uh, you know controls the eye movements the oculomotor trochlear and abducens nuclei so that is how these fibers go up and control the 3, 4, 6 cranial nerve nuclei. Then we've got the vestibular thalamocortical pathway, which is this pathway here from the vestibular nuclei to the thalamus to the cortex, vestibular thalamocortical pathway. So here the fibers ascend with the medial lemniscus fibers to reach the postroventral nucleus of the thalamus, postroventral nucleus of the thalamus. Okay, And from the thalamus, the projections extend to the parietal lobe and temporal lobe which is mainly concerned with the equilibrium right now the next pathway is the or next or the final pathway is the vestibulo reticular fibers which are these fibers here so they project from the vestibular nuclei to the reticular formation of the brain stem so these are the different pathways of where the fibers go from the vestibular nuclei okay so when a question like that this is asked you have to write about the vestibular ganglion the the first order neuron and which are the tract formed by the second order neurons wherein you have to mention about this uh, pathway to the cerebellum vestibular vestigial tract vestibular spinal tract medial longitudinal fasciculus vestibular thalamocortical tract and vestibular reticular fibers okay so that would sum up our vestibular pathway here you can always finish it off with an applied aspect so here we can mention about the motion sickness or sea sickness the main symptoms of which are nausea, vomiting and vertigo, which is ex especially due to excessive vestibular stimulation. You've got a lot of sensory inputs coming, which are conflicting in nature. So that is why you have motion sickness. So it's a neural mismatch from changes in vestibular and other sensory inputs without corresponding adjustments in the spatial orientation. In the sense, you're getting a lot of information, but it is not, it is conflicting each other. So the corresponding adjustments cannot be made which will lead to a, a excessive vestibular stimulation causing motion sickness. And what is the management? So it can be prevented by antihistamines or scopolamine to su suppress the vestibular excitability and thereby decrease the symptoms. Okay. So I hope this concept is clear and you know what to write when the question vestibular pathway is asked. So that's all. Thank you.